kind of feeling like the family that we're going to watch now. to the town center. Contentville was nestled in a valley between formidable snow-capped mountains where people didn't leave town much, and when they did leave, they were seldom ever seen again. So began the rumor that all around Contentville were wild places with ferocious beasts that attacked and killed anyone who ventured too far out of town. The simple traveling pilgrim started to ring the bell in the village center to gather the people of the village. Slowly, one by one, the villagers peeped their heads out of the windows to see who had started such a commotion. You see, the bell in the villagers' minds was never really rung before because nothing out of the ordinary ever happened in Contentville for them to ring it. The mayor, awakened from his afternoon nap, got up startled and led the gathering of townsmen towards the village center. 
when the gathering crowd arrived in the center of town, they saw the traveling pilgrim standing on the bell platform waiting for the people to arrive. People of Contentville, I have come here today to gather those who would want to join me in an adventure of a lifetime. I have been given a map which directs me to the map maker, and I hope in finding the map maker I can find a vast treasure. Anyone wishing to come with me can meet me here tomorrow at sunrise, and we can journey together up the mountains to search for the map maker. The mayor was the first one to speak in response to the traveler. Who are you? How can we trust you? Our village is safe, and people who leave the village have never come back. The traveling pilgrim scanned the eyes of all the villagers and saw the same fear on all their eyes. Slowly and deliberately, the pilgrim responded, I know you don't know me, and I've never been beyond this village myself. I don't know what difficulties lay ahead on the journey. All I know is I have this map, and I believe the map maker will reward those who earnestly seek him. I was told that this map is ancient guidance, and that those who have followed the map have found eternal treasure. I came here to see if anyone wanted to journey together with me, and together we will follow the map to seek the map maker. I don't know if I'll ever arrive and we will never be the same. But the map maker's call for me to search for him is stronger than any desire I would have to stay here and content them. Of course, this was not the answer the mayor and many of those in Contentville wanted to hear. No reassurances of safety or a traveling pilgrim with vast experience to guide them. But an ancient map pointing the way to some map maker who, as far as they were concerned, doesn't even exist. The mayor responded for the village, well, you don't give us much incentive or evidence that following you is the right thing to do. Your ancient map is more reliable than you, if it is true and not some big lie. We will see if anyone wants to join you on your journey. Slowly the crowd disperses, and we hear rumblings in the crowd as everyone is deciding whether to follow the traveling pilgrim. We hear, we just got married, so why should we leave? We're just starting our life here in Contentville. Another says, I have a good job here and own many properties. How can I leave all that I have built here for some crazy adventure? And we hear in the crowd an older person. Those adventures are for the young ones. I'm too old and don't have the energy to learn a new way to live. Slowly, everyone dispersed to their homes and tried to forget the traveling pilgrim. In the morning, just before the sunrise, the traveling pilgrim arrived at the town center and wondered if anyone from the town would join him on his adventure. As the sun came up, a few people came out of their homes and joined the traveling pilgrim. Some carried quite full packs, like Bob. The traveling pilgrim smiled at Bob and simply said to him, I'm not sure you're going to need all that stuff for the journey. It might weigh you down and put us all in danger if we have to cross a river. Bob responded, one can never be too prepared and why can't I be comfortable and travel as well? The traveling pilgrim just smiled, knowing Bob won't last long with the pack that full. And he knew Bob would have to come to the conclusion himself, or he wouldn't join and continue on the journey at all. Then there was Susie, who had this vast arsenal of weapons and deadly sprays to protect against any danger she might encounter. She even had a laser-guided sight attached to her floodlight headlamp on top of her head. The traveling pilgrim spoke quite softly to Susan. Why the arsenal? You might end up hurting one of us by accident. Susie turned to face the traveling pilgrim, and everyone in the room ducked, holding their breath as Susie's laser crossed over each of them until resting right on the forehead of the pilgrim. 
She said, I don't know what evil is out there, and I've been hurt before, and I don't want to ever be let down again by anybody. I need to protect myself. The traveling pilgrims sighed at Susie and knew that she would have to trust them, and she, or she wouldn't get very far on the journey or end up injuring one of their own. The traveling pilgrim knew he couldn't change how Susie thought, and he silently prayed in his heart that she would learn to trust again. There were other travelers that I don't have much time to talk about, but I'll briefly describe them. There was Louise, whose backpack was overpacked with all her academic books. The pack was so full that as she walked, the books would fall out here and there, and Louise would have to pick them up, take off her pack, and vigorously try to stuff all her books back into her pack. She would always slow the group up, and any time anyone, someone questioned if she needed all those academic books, she would respond, I need to keep my options open in case this map of yours doesn't lead me to a place where I want to go. Finally, I think it's important to mention about camouflage Phil. Phil, from his pack to his clothing, was completely covered in camo. Phil blended in so much with his surroundings and that the group at times would lose sight of Phil for long periods of time. And suddenly he would surprise them by jumping out from behind an apple tree with an apple in his hand and shock his fellow travelers. So it is with this ragtag group. The traveling pilgrims set out with a map in search of the map maker. Oh, I can't believe I almost forgot to mention a key part about the traveling pilgrim. He hobbles with the limb, and so each step of the journey was carefully placed so he wouldn't fall. This at times became a point of frustration for this pilgrimage, as the days seemed so slow and deliberate to many of the traveling companions liking. Yet, we see the traveling pilgrims have already gone through many dangers, toils, and snares learning to travel together, and keeping their focus on the eternal treasure of the map maker. The church family is a ragtag group of followers traveling together on a pilgrimage to find God in our lives. We might be at different places on that journey, but none of us has arrived where, to a place where we don't need God's grace and leading in our lives. Like that ragtag group of misfits, we too have our own baggage in our backpacks that hinder our journey or others' journey to find God. God rewards those who earnestly seek Him, not because of how together they have become on their own. No, God rewards those who earnestly seek Him, knowing how much they need God's saving grace and guidance to find Him. The invitation to pilgrimage to seek God has always been a part of our history of our faith. Abraham was 75 years old when he was called to leave his country and his people and go to the land God would show him. Our scripture text says Abraham obeyed God and went on his pilgrimage even though he didn't know where he was going. Abraham's journey that lasted the rest of his life was a journey of seeking after God and for a heavenly country built by God. Abraham and other patriarchs of our faith pilgrimage had nothing but the promises of God to rest upon. Without any visible evidence that these promises would ever be fulfilled. These pilgrims knew as one commentator states, God promises find their true fulfillment in a world that transcends the present earthly one. Their lifelong pursuit of a heavenly country through continued obedience to God's commands set the standard for persevering in the Christian faith. Abraham was able to see in his heart's eye to welcome what God will do in the future and in this hope or faith 
And God caused Abraham to live his life as a foreigner, a stranger, a pilgrim on a journey. Paul came to see our lives as a pilgrimage when he says in Philippians 3, verses 20 and 21, he says, Christians, our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. My first response is, what a vision Paul had. What a vision. Peter as well teaches in 1 Peter 2. Dear friends, he says, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. The Christian life is a pilgrimage of moving forward, always trusting God, and the truth his word reveals about himself leads the way. The Christian life is a pilgrimage of faith. We will never have enough evidence in this life that our journey will not be a journey of faith. When we trust of things hoped for and not seen by our physical eyes. As Paul said at the end of the great love chapter, for now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I only know in part, he says, but then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. It saddens my heart when I hear that people won't come to church because they think that church is a place where people have to have their relationship with God all figured out. Much like the family in the opening video this morning, we think that we have to present this aura around us of this all-togetherness. When the opposite is true. The church is a family of pilgrims seeking to find God in their lives. We haven't arrived. The Bible guides us on our journey as stories of Abraham being called to leave his hometown and begin a pilgrimage of seeking God at 75 can help us not feel so crazy when we discern God's call to follow after him. My prayer for St. Paul's is that we will develop a hunger for how God's word guides us on our journey to seek him. I pray that we will see each other as a family of fellow pilgrims willing to say to each other, I will journey with you. As we journey together to seek God in our lives. Your pastor, I don't know if you didn't realize this yet, he doesn't have all the answers. <laughs> and I get exhausted when I think that I should have all the answers. It's too much for me to bear. I'm a fellow pilgrim seeking God through his word. Have you ever thought seeing God work in your lives is key to me having the courage to venture outside of Contentville myself? We journey together, each of us seeking God, spurring one another on as fellow pilgrims. I want to close with Paul's words in Philippians 3, earlier, verses 12 to 14, where he says, not that I've already obtained all this, people, or I've already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. And the image there is grabbing you by the bootstraps almost, and helping us out. Brothers and sisters, he says, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining, keep going towards what is ahead. I press on, I pilgrim, I journey toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Let us as a family on a pilgrimage press on as well towards the goal 
to win the prize which God has called us heavenward in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. The God who calls us to yourself, lead us as a church family towards you. Help us to throw off everything that so easily entangles us on our journey and to fix our eyes on Jesus, our author and perfecter of our faith. We are so thankful, Lord, that you call us to join you on this journey by your mercy and grace. We ask that you teach us how to encourage one another on our journey towards you, Lord. Please be with those who are struggling to find you in the midst of their pain. Be their hope. Lord, open your word to each of us this coming week in a new way. Give us a hunger, a hunger in us to learn more about you and to meet us in our times of need. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we really want to be a church that believes that you can do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine according to your power that is at work within us. May you receive glory in your church through all generations, forever and ever. Amen.